Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Bro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. Now, we see them, and today we have another fun episode for you guys that I'm really, really going to enjoy, so make sure you guys stick around for this one, because we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Now, what I think the majority of us appreciate are people who tell it like it is, right? I think all of us appreciate that. No one really enjoys being lied to especially over and over and over again it's something that's very annoying because if people keep doing it we will start to lose faith in those people and stop respecting them no one respects a liar especially a liar that lies to their face no one likes that i don't care who it is it could be your kids it could be your brother it could be your sister it could be your friend it could be some, it could be your favorite politician every once we find out that people are lying to us all of a sudden the way we view that person changes this lakers season has been an abject failure by every standard metric you want to use it has been a total disaster i said it before I'm going to say it again. This season, previous season, was the single most disappointing season in the history of the NBA for a few reasons. Number one, for the expectations. Number two, for the level of talent and the names on that roster. To not even make it into the plan. And I think we need to continuously hammer that point home because it gives a lot of the things that we're going to uh, say, it gives them a lot more gravitas, right? If people are under the, the under the impression that, oh, the Lakers, it wasn't so bad. They just missed the play. It wasn't that bad. No, no, you, you kind of miss uh, why so many people are up in arms about this Lakers team. It was the worst season in NBA history, and there's no two ways to say it. And after the season ended, many of us are here looking for answers, trying to understand what exactly went wrong. When people ask the question, are people going to be talking about the Lakers? Yes, they're going to be talking about the Lakers. They're the most famous basketball team in the world. And people want to know what the hell happened. So that's the reason. There are two answers to this solution. If you don't want to hear people talk about the Lakers, you, you simply don't watch or stop complaining. It's that simple. If you see a segment that pops up on YouTube, from, just don't watch. They're going to talk about them because a lot of people, uh, regardless of what they say, still want to know what happened with this team is just a pure reality. They're not stupid. They wouldn't be talking about them if no one if no one was interested uh, in understanding what, uh, um, what, 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 what went wrong. So many of us out here are looking for answers. But instead, what it seems that we've been getting are excuses. One excuse after the other. And it seems as if even, it seems as if even Stephen A. Smith yesterday finally heard enough. So he was on Undisputed, I mean, you know, ESPN First Take. We want to play some of the comments that he had to make about just some of the excuses that these Laker players have been making. So before we go too far, take a listen to some of the comments that Stephen A. Smith had to make here. We're going to come back and react to that. Take a listen to that. Okay. Yo, come on, LeBron. I, I, let me look into the camera. I mean, uh, yo, Bron, Bron, Ronnie's watching, bro. The family's watching. The basketball world is watching. How could you say something so flagrantly untrue. How could you do that? Come on, bro. You better than that. LeBron James is one of the greatest players this game has ever seen. My brother, we will miss you when you are gone. Your commitment to excellence, the constant fact that you're always in shape, you're ready, 19 years in the league, your 19th season, you averaged 30. You flat out ball. And you're going to sit up here and make sure, because we know you're going to do, because you could be in the professional that you are, you did your exit interview, and now we ain't going to see you do no interviews with the media for a few months. We know how you roll, and rightfully so, because you, you, you're you professional, and 99% of the time you show up there and you do your post-game interviews and you talk to the press, you fulfill your obligations. That's why you're the face of the league. That's why you're one of the most iconic figures this game has ever seen. You finished 16 games under 500. As a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, a place where you came to win chips just to fulfill what others before you had done, Kobe and Shaq and everybody else in between, you finished 16 games under 500 in a playoff system that extended from eight teams per conference to 10 teams per conference. You still missed the playoffs. 
and that's not a failure? You got to be kidding me. See, it's stuff like that where LeBron becomes so disappointing because he has such profound intelligence and such profound things to say that when you say something like that, Key, you give folks fodder to assume that you're lying about other stuff that you might say down the road because we see your willingness to lie to our face right there with a straight face. I mean, and then he didn't even have the decency to have on shades when he did it yesterday. I mean, if there was ever a time to wear shades, that would have been a time. Wait, Not when you're sitting on a bench during up, a game indoors. The best time for him to wear shades was yesterday because that lie yeah. That he told you cannot have people just like I got on Russell Westbrook, Molly. Hold yeah, on. Okay. Just like I got on Russell Westbrook for saying during press conferences, I'm fine. I'm gonna be all right. You know, I ain't no big deal. I ain't taking this home with me. I'm cool. I had no expectations as a Laker. Just like I said that, I'm gonna be fair and get on LeBron, who I love. I'm gonna get on LeBron about this. Come on, bro. 16 games under 500. The New Orleans Pelicans and the San Antonio Spurs finished a minimum of 14 games under 500, and they were better. Now, there's one thing I don't really understand about Stephen A. Smith, and that thing is this. Why, whenever you have to criticize someone, you always have to prostrate before you do it? You always have to, like, put all of these fillers, like, oh, you're a great person, you're a nice guy, one of the most, like, just say what you have to say, because it makes it seem as if you're afraid to say what you want. Just say what you got to say. All of those things you're saying about these people, we already know it. It's not like as if you're, you know, you're introducing this guy for a speech and you have to start listing off all of his life accomplishment. We already know this stuff. Get to the bloody point. Say what you got to say about the guy and let's move on. It makes it seem as if you're afraid to um, actually um, talk. But back to back to this comments, I 100% agree with, I, I concur with him. He was 100% on the money. And I think that anyone um, that feels that this Lakers season, that maybe they had a bright spot somewhere, you're in total, total denial. Total denial. Total denial. They didn't even develop their younger talent along the way. At least some organizations, they find a way to play their, their veteran players and some of their older. They didn't even do that in a way that made sense. And we found out in the last two games of the season that, wait a minute, these guys have some guys that can play. They were actually able to win two games, which is something a lot of the veteran starters can even do. But, but the younger guys actually went out there and played better than a lot of these starters. Right. So they have some talent on the roster. It's just a shame that they weren't able uh, to develop any of that roster uh, and, and any of that talent um, um, throughout the season. But anyway. To Stephen A. Smith's comments, here's what's going to happen. A decent amount of people are going to hear some of the things that he said. And what they're going to translate that into is Stephen A. Smith is hating. Even though he has LeBron as the second greatest player of all time, even though he said all of these glowing things about these people, they're still going to turn that or translate what he said into hating. And I think it speaks to a larger societal issue um, as it pertains to men, especially young men. This is what gets exposed whenever these type of things are said, in my personal opinion. Because now I think we have an environment in which, for whatever reason, young men or men, however you want to say it, simply cannot take any criticism anymore. Men cannot be criticized. You can't be critical about them because if you do, they're going to say you're hating. This is what society has turned into today. This is this is what we this 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 this, 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 this is what you get when you take away the masculine energy. This is what happens. A bunch of emotional reactions to any little thing that is said about you. Any little thing is a slight. It's a diss. This is what happens. And, it, it, and, and it's scary that young guys today cannot take criticism, which basically means that an uncle, a brother, a father, a good friend, if they try to correct you, you're going to say, this guy's a hater, so my friend, if no one can say anything about you, who can? How are you going to curtail yourself? This is what happens when Stephen A. Smith said that. Trust you, believe you me. 
a coalition of guys are going to take what he said as hate. They translate um, critical, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, what is it? Constructive criticism as hate. And that is dangerous. I don't have any kids, but if I do have a, when, when I do have children and I have a son and he tries to pull that nonsense with me, <laughs> oh, let me leave it there. What I want to know is, uh, let me know what you guys think about what Stephen A. Smith had to say. Do you think he's right? Do you think he's wrong? Whatever you guys think, catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.